Rain, yes, I know we get enough of it, particularly here in wet Wales. Uh, but this particular picture was taken in Auckland, New Zealand. It was absolutely hammering down with rain. One of the things when you try taking pictures of rain, yes, it may look the pe people with the umbrellas up, it looks soaking wet, but I haven't managed to capture the rain itself. I was getting soaking wet. No, I didn't have a waterproof jacket on. Now I've got your sympathy votes. Uh, can we proceed? Good, thank you very much. Right, as I said, it was sort of taking Auckland, New Zealand, hammering down with rain. So what I thought we'd do is take a look, see how we can take the image here, really cluttered. It was just a simple grab shot. I just love the yellow, the reds going on here, the reflections of the car lights, uh, not particularly sort of, sort of bothered, you know, all this sort of busy stuff going on, this light area at the top. So I thought, right, an opportunity to experiment with a crop. Picking up the crop tool, I want to get rid of the top here and I want to get rid of the bottom, so we're going to drag it over. We're going to give it very much a letterbox format, just coming down above the top of the rail in here. Looking better already. Let's just take a look. Yep, just dropping it down a little bit. That little bit of white on that signage there bothering me slightly, so bringing that in. That looks better. This car just leaving the frame, this lady just walking out the frame. Yeah, I like that anyway. So just pressing enter on the keyboard or clicking inside the framework and there it is. We have now cropped it to letterbox format. Right, next stage is we're going to darken things down a little bit more. Now to do that, we're going to use command J or control J to duplicate the background layer. We're also going to go to filter blur. We're going to go to Gaussian blur and we're going to take Gaussian blur up to, let's just take a look, that sort of area there. Something you know when you squint your eyes, that's what we're after. I think that's what we got. So we're going to click OK to that. Next we're going to drop down to this little icon here. The half black, half white. It's an adjustment layer and its hue saturation is the direction we're heading for. That's what we've now got. But dropping straight down to this little black and white paper clip, clicking on this, you'll notice the way it drops down. We have now clipped this to the layer immediately underneath. In other words, it's that blurred layer. Let's take the saturation up into this sort of area there. That looks pretty good, like that. Right, come in, taking a look. You can see it's clipped, that little bent arrow there. Okay, so your version of Photoshop doesn't have that on the, uh, the adjustment layer. Don't worry, just press the Alt or the Option key. That's Alt or Option, bringing your cursor between the layers. You can see the way that sort of pops up. There's that same paper clip. We've unclipped it. It's now going through to the layer underneath. You can see the way it's adjusting the hue saturation there. By clipping it, it's only affecting this layer here, which is just what we're after. Right, now we've done that, let's click on this layer. and We're going to change the blend mode to soft lights. So bringing that through, in we go, and just dropping down the opacity just a little bit. And you can see the way we've just sort of darkened down the image, giving it a bit more sort of... Uh, depth to the color as well using the hue saturation there it is job done right now if that would just stay still that would be pretty good as well so let's take that up more because it did seem to have a mind of its own into that area there right right escaping clicking on the top layer in the layer stack above this top layer we're going to put in a new empty layer by clicking on this icon in it goes this is going to become our rain layer We've got black as the foreground color. Any other colors, press D on the keyboard. Make sure you've got those default colors coming up. In with the gradient tool, we have got the paint bucket tool. Just drop it onto that new empty layer. There it is. Filter, noise, stay. We're going to go to add noise, and we're going to add noise. The amount we're looking for is something about 100 to 115, something around that area there. I'm just going to take it to 105. We have got uniform and we have got monochromatic. That's it in sort of color. We've got acid rain. There it is in monochromatic. We now have got sort of better looking rain. And click OK to that. Back to filter. Back to blur. Motion blur this time. And sort of just picking up the direction of the rain in the image. In other words, I was going by the way the, the umbrellas are being held and sort of the general direction I didn't pay much attention because I was getting rather wet so I'm going to put it to that sort of angle there you can of course change it to whichever way you want it to go that sort of angle would be pretty good there's the distance you can see the way we can drop it right the way down bringing it up like that looks good in that area there and click OK to that 
Right, at the moment you cannot see the image underneath. That's because we've got a black background. Now to change this, what we need to do is we need to lighten it. Now to lighten it, we're going to use the blend modes. Under the light, and these are all the lightening sort of blend modes. We're going to go for screen. That brings it through, and you can see the rain coming through there nicely. That looks pretty good. Looks a bit foggy though, so to change that, once again we're going to drop down to this little black and white icon, clicking on this. This time we're going to head in for curves. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did with the hue saturation. We're going to drop down, we're going to clip it to the layer underneath. There it is there. Just keep an eye on this histogram in the background. As soon as I click on it, you'll notice the way that histogram, histogram even changes. That looks better like that. Coming into the top right hand corner, these are going to be the lighter pixels as we move this across. You can see they are indeed the lighter pixels dropping down to the opposite, the bottom left corner, moving this in. These are the darker pixels. Now we're beginning to pick up that real sort of nice wet rain effect. Is there such a thing? I suppose so. Bring it into that sort of area there and just moving it around. What I like about this method is it is completely adjustable. In other words, you can dip back into this if you want to by just clicking on it. You can sort of lift this up. You can drop it down, make it a little bit darker. Entirely up to you. But there it is. That's adding rain. You can see the way the whole thing is working together. If I just switch all the other layers off, that's what we started off with. This is adding in that blur with the sort of hue saturation. You can see the bite coming through there with the reds and the yellows. That's the rain layer going in there, then darkening it down a little bit. You can see the way the whole thing is working together. Go on. Oh, oh forgot to say, just taking a look at it. You can see at the top there, it's almost got like a barcode effect to the top and the bottom. Doesn't look particularly good. Glad you reminded me about this. Click on the layer with rain. In fact, let's rename this rain so we know exactly what's on there. Click on your rain layer. Now use Command T or Control T to put that transform tool around your rain layer. Drop down to the bottom, holding down the Alt or the Option, and we can pull that out like this. As you pull it out, because you've held down Alt or Option, you're pulling out the top and the bottom exactly the same. So there it is. We got rid of that sort of barcode in effect, which I very nearly forgot about but I'm so glad you reminded me. There it is there, using Command-0, zero, Control-0 zero to go to fit on screen. Just taking a look at this, perhaps reducing the opacity down a little bit on this. Don't be afraid to do it. Save it in layers. Take a look at it so a little bit later on. That looks better like that. Pressing Tab on the keyboard. There is our finished image of a rather wet Auckland. Go on, give it a try.